Okay, let's, let's see what Karen's talking about, ladies. Wow. Pretty much a free-for-all. Let's take a look at these two videos. I'm really kind of pissed, man. I'm really pissed. Let's check this out. I'll tell you why. A store stealing everything they could actually get their hands on. She shared her video with CBS4 investigator Brian Moss. So, Brian, this is pretty shocking. Well, according to the retailers, they say this kind of organized crime is really becoming more and more common in everyday occurrence. Retail theft is rising driven by inflation and lesser consequences for property crimes. In Colorado, retail theft is now estimated to cost retailers about a billion dollars a year. And more and more, the thieves know there's a good chance they'll get away. It was earlier this month at this Ross store in Denver on South Colorado Boulevard. A crew of thieves stormed through, filling bags with whatever was close. They just have free reign. It's just a free-for-all. This shopper took video of the thieves running away without interference mm. from store employees or security guards. We don't even intimidate them at this point. They just come in here and make sure they get what they want and then they leave. We went mm -hmm. back and talked to manager Ashley Finley, who said she recognized two of the thieves as having done this repeatedly at her store. She says shoplifters hit the store three or four times every day. But she says corporate policy prohibits employees from going hands on. We can't touch them. We can't grab anything from their hands. We can't put ourselves basically in jeopardy. The result? Higher prices for paying customers. And it's not just here. Lakewood police say they're looking for four thieves targeting department stores in the metro area, allegedly stealing more than $12,000 in goods from eight department stores in just one month's time. And a statewide grand jury indicted an Adams County couple for allegedly stealing nearly $40,000 in merchandise from Home Depot stores in five counties. Loading up their bags, running out. We mm. showed this recent video to Chris Howes, who runs Colorado's Retail Council. While Howes does not know who these people are, if they're part of an organized ring, he says the organized rings typically sell what they steal online, maybe armed, and are raising cash to buy drugs. To have this break down culturally, where people can just storm into a store and take anything they want, I think it's a real breakdown in civil society that we all need to focus on. How says organized retail crime has increased exponentially. We know that the folks who are committing these crimes are very comfortable using weapons, which wasn't so much the case in, in the past. And that's what concerns this shopper. As this becomes more normalized, customers are at risk. Well-meaning armed shopper that, you know, sees something like that happening, doesn't know what's, you know, what's taking place and, and things could escalate and somebody could get hurt. The National Retail Federation says retail theft was up 26.5% last year, now costing merchants $95 billion a year. So we pay higher prices. House believes the solution is more prosecutions and laws with more teeth. The uh, criminals who are uh, knocking off these stores for thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in product um, do this so often that they know what the rules are. They also know what the felony thresholds are. Recently passed laws make it easier for law enforcement to target online sellers who are peddling stolen goods. As for store manager Ashley Finley, she's frustrated. Just that we can't do anything about it. I mean, we can't stop them. We can't grab anything from their hands. I mean, we just basically have to watch them and leave. We sent two emails to Ross's corporate headquarters, but got no response. In other cities, this kind of theft has become so bad and so widespread, major retailers have actually closed their stores. And I should add, the woman who took that video, we darkened her face. She asked us to do that because she was concerned these criminals might find her. Okay, everybody, so you saw part A. Now, one more video. Just when you think you've seen it all. No, you haven't. Check this out. Dusted Dan, a thieving man. I wonder why is he wearing a wetsuit? Here we go. The kayaks made off with about $20,000 in cash after breaking into a home on the shore of Lake Washington. And the scariest part here, police say the homeowners were inside. Fox 13 News reporter A.J. Janival is in King County with how the thieves got away. A.J. That incident happening down the water here on Lake Washington at Yarrow Point. It's a small community. It's a quiet one. Definitely not used to this sort of crime. And now they're on edge. Take a look at these two. 
Police say these wetsuit-wearing thieves used Lake Washington to make off with a small fortune. The break-in happened early oh, morning fortune. on the Thursday before Labor Day weekend. The two broke into a home while the people who lived there were inside yeah. and stole $20,000 in cash, then got away in a kayak paddling toward Kirkland, police say. Wow. This may have been their only option for escape. The town of Yarrow Point only has one road in and out. It's a small community with less than 1,200 people living there. And the city contracts with nearby Clyde Hill Police. Officials with the Clyde Hill Police Department wouldn't speak to me on camera. They tell me they can't share more because the case is an open investigation. Police do say it's possible they could have acted quicker. Since the people living at the home were in the house during the burglary, they immediately called police. However, Clyde Hill Police tell me about 45 minutes before this burglary, several neighbors in the community saw the suspects trying to break into two other homes, but those neighbors did not call 911. I went to the Yarrow Point Town Hall to speak to the mayor about this pricey heist in this small community, but she was unavailable. Believe it or not, neighbors at Yarrow Point tell me this is not the first time that they can remember thieves using Lake Washington to commit crimes in their community. Investigators ask anyone with information to contact them. Okay, everybody, you saw part A. Stick around for part B, the commentary.